so my name is Duveke Kok and uh, recently I wrote a book about um, a specific um, compound found in cannabis and it's called uh, CBD, which is the abbreviation for cannabidiol. And um, I wrote this book because um, I found it very beneficial. I use it for myself when I had severe uh, nerve pain and I was suffering from insomnia because of the pain I couldn't sleep and because of the lack of sleep I got very depressed and um, it also made me very anxious because I didn't know when the pain uh, would stop um, and when using uh, when, st when I started to use um, CBD um, I gained um, some minutes of sleep again so I could start sleeping and because of this my uh, pain was relieved and the anxiety stopped and my depression faded so I was very happy about this extract and I felt that everybody should know about CBD. You see here in the Netherlands uh, CBD got very popular uh, only recently and at the time I was suffering from these pains we're talking the end of the year 2014 beginning 2015 and um, at that time um, well CBD was practically unheard of um, but people that knew of it knew that it was an extract from cannabis and cannabis is an illegal uh, plant in the Netherlands um, and extracts are thought to be illegal as well. So I was, I thought that um, CBD was illegal and could cause a high and could um, lead to addiction. So I was very, um, not afraid, but careful um, um, for this specific uh, uh, medicine or extract. Um, yet nothing helped. So I was, I was looking for alternatives. And then my husband said, well, we should probably try CBD oil. And it took me some time to convince myself that it's uh, maybe an alternative to therapies that were obviously not working. So we are living in a very small uh, village in the Netherlands. And uh, obviously at that time there was no CBD available nearby. So my husband took a train to Amsterdam and got into this very narrow street somewhere near the central station, all very blur and vague. And he entered his shop. Um, where he bought a small bottle of CBD oil and um, coming home with this uh, well, extract or this bottle uh, it stood on the kitchen table for some days before I actually convinced myself to try it and um, well the rumor was that it was supposed to help against pain and depression and was um, helping um, for better sleep so um, in the end, I decided to give it a try, and it worked wonderful. We actually are still um, uh, holding on to a very old law that says that we are allowed to have coffee shops that um, provide uh, recreational um, uh, cannabis, so the marijuana. And this is the kind of cannabis that's uh, high or does contain THC, the psychoactive compound. Um, CBD is relatively new um, and uh, well the government obviously doesn't know very well yet where to place it so for the moment um, it can be sold as a food supplement um, if only um, uh, products that contain CBD they cannot contain THC so this is where the government draws uh, the line Right, so you have the coffee shops on one hand that provide uh, cannabis containing THC and then you have the drug stores and other stores, uh, web shops or um, uh, groceries that provide um, food supplements containing CBD and other cannabinoids but not the THC, not the psychoactive compounds. And then um, apart from that we have a medicinal cannabis uh, program since uh, 2003 um, so in this, uh, the government is providing medicinal um, uh, grown uh, cannabis to patients. So if a patient um, is suffering from a certain kind of illness, uh, he or she can then go to a doctor, which can then uh, prescribe a recipe uh, and with this um, uh, go to the pharmacist and the pharmacist will then um, supply uh, the medicinal uh, cannabis. We have a, a 0.2 percent in um, hemp, so in the industrial hemp, and that's based on uh, well guidelines from the European uh, uh, European Commission. Um, 
so this is the, the 0.2 percent THC is based upon the guidelines from provided by the Europe uh, European Commission. Um, in the food supplements, there's actually um, recently been decided that it can only contain 0.05 percent THC, so even less than a 0.2 percent THC in the industrial hemp. In the food supplements, there should only be 0.05 percent THC if measured. On the product itself, uh, it's not allowed anymore to uh, mention even or write down the, the the word THC, so it should not be on the package. And it's um, well uh, about percentages. If you can compare it to uh, medicinal uh, cannabis, um, well these are uh, different kind of varieties that start maybe at 5% THC. In a coffee shop you will find between 5 or 15% THC. So compared to this amount, the 0 0.2 or 0 0.05 even is, is really very, very low. So they're being very, very uh, precautious on not having these psychoactive compounds. The same type of bottle, uh, but obviously a different, different brand, different type of extraction. But these bottles, I think this is the most commonly used uh, type of, um, this is the most common way that people in the Netherlands use uh, CBD. So uh, as an extract and then sub, um, dose sublingually, so underneath uh, the tongue. Um, it's an easy way to use it. Um, it goes into the body, into the bloodstream quite easily. Um, and also quite fast. So compared to other um, type of products, for example, uh, capsules or pills, they go through the digestive system. And um, so uh, CBD is, um, the liver breaks down, certain enzymes in the liver break down uh, CBD. Um, so a lot of uh, cannabinoids are actually uh, broken down by the liver when uh, digesting it, when um, taking it orally. So with this, uh, I think it's more interesting. Um, on the on the bottle itself, you will find um, uh, well the content, of course. Uh, and in the Netherlands, we use the word percentage, which I don't think it's very common in the states, because in the states I think it's more about milligrams, and I think it also should be about milligrams. Uh, but we express the, the amount of milligrams uh, in uh, in oil, and then you get a certain percentage. So there should be the amount of milligrams uh, of, uh, of CBD should be on the bottle. Um, and then also uh, the amount of milligrams per serving. So um, here you have a content of 10 milliliters, which is approximately 240 drops per bottle. And then you have a certain amount uh, of CBD uh, per drop. So with this you can more or less calculate uh, the amount of uh, milligrams that you uh, intake. And I think the common advice is to uh, start with the low dosage, so I think um, we mostly recommend to start with maybe two times two drops in the morning and then the, in the evening. And then um, depending on the illness you will notice a difference. Um, so you can higher the dose um, as you like. Um, the philosophy behind this, starting low, is that when you start with a high dosage immediately, you don't know for sure if the lower doses, uh, dosage would also have been effective. So with this case you start uh, with a low dosage and then you generally um, start to build up the dose. And the way that you take the medicine, so you have this dropper, that you squeeze and then you know takes the extract inside uh, the tube. Underneath the tongue, the, the skin obviously is very thin and you have these uh, glands, I think it's called, glands. So, um, the the CBD extract is, is um, uh, easily being um, uh, taken into the body, uh, and I usually do this in front of a mirror so I can actually see the amount of drops that I put in. <laughs> so you do it like this. And then you leave um, your dosage in your mouth underneath the tongue for about half a minute, a minute. So it can be absorbed and then, um, well, you can swallow everything with some nice <laughs> hemp tea or some water or some juice, whatever you, uh, you like. There's lots of different kind of uh, products and um, 
Some of them have a very strong taste. Some of them have a very mild taste. Um, this one that I took now, it tastes a bit like the smell of fresh grass, fresh uh, cut grass. When you cut grass, the, the smell that comes from it, that, well, this is how it tastes. Um, so it has a very fresh, um, almost fruity kind of taste. Um, it has a little bit of bitterness as well. I found it very nice, but it took me some while to get used to it. <laughs> you will not get high from this. There is no psychoactive compounds in this bottle. And then if people are still not comfortable, then I will try to explain the differences between the type of cannabis or hemp where the extract is made from. So the, the, basic, um, uh, the basic material that um, uh, this extract is, uh, well, the, that it, it's been extracted from. And um, so the industrial hemp or the, the fiber hemp is used uh, for making these kind of extracts for food supplements. And they cannot contain more than 0.2% THC. So if something can be found, it's very, very low. And then also we have obviously a legislation saying that there cannot be any THC in food supplements or at least not higher than 0.05% THC. Um, so you will not notice anything of this, um, um, any, any psychoactive effect. This is my book and it's called Gezond met CBD and in English it will be translated to Healthy with CBD. Um, and I specifically chose this title because it's healthy with and not necessarily healthy because. So I want to leave some free space for any kind of skeptics. And the subtitle is called En andere cannabinoïde, so and other cannabinoids. Um, when I started to take my medicine, my CBD, I was very much focused on CBD only and I was a bit, well, not scared, but careful with THC. Um, but during my research, I found that THC, I had some issues with it myself um, because of the, um, uh, well, because of it's an illegal substance still and because it has psychoactive um, side effects. And I found out during my research that it's actually very, very interesting uh, cannabinoid as well. Uh, CBD and THC are the most common cannabinoids, but there are over 100 or 110 even uh, different kind of cannabinoids. So, and they all have uh, a lot of interesting um, health benefits. So this is why it's not, it's mainly focusing on CBD, but other cannabinoids as well. Another uh, main reason for me why, to, uh, why I wanted to write this book was because at the time that I wanted to use CBD, there was no information available. There was, I think, just one Dutch book uh, which covered some information, but very basic. And I just wanted to know um, how this stuff works on your body, what it is exactly. And I found it very interesting why a lot of people seem to still think about uh, cannabis as a very demonic, evil plant. And I was wondering if this is right um, and where this, this stigma comes from. So I found it very interesting to provide the information, um, both regarding le legislation and law, uh, about products, about dosage, um, uh, and of course the health benefits, what exactly it does for your body and what we know now um, uh, from scientific evidence already available um, in, in literature. Small point out is um, that it's written for Salis, that's the name of my uh, eldest son. Um, I got these pains after giving birth to him and we've been through a lot of issues. And CBD did a lot of good for me, and because of doing this good for me, I was, well, our relationship, uh, mother uh, and child, got better. So I wanted to dedicate my book uh, not only to all patients that need it, but spe specifically to, um, uh, to my son. So my book has a section about uh, the endocannabinoid system. Um, and uh, it's a <laughs> very funny word that I've been using so many times, so I can say it's very fast, endocannabinoid system. So what it is, we make our own uh, cannabinoids, right? So you have the cannabinoids in the cannabis plants that were discovered first. And then during research, how cannabis works on our bodies, researchers found that we have specific kind of receptors, which are like these large molecules in our uh, cells. 
and they work a little bit like a lock. So a cannabinoid from a plant is a key to the specific lock in our body cells, right? So we have two types of um, uh, receptors, um, CB1 and CB2, that relate to various types of uh, cannabinoids in the cannabis plant. So then researchers thought, why do we have these receptors for a plant? And then, um, obviously, certain compounds in our bodies were found that are actually the compounds that can fit like a key into the lock of these receptors. So we make our own cannabinoids. And because the cannabinoids in cannabis were discovered first, our body's um, compounds are named after cannabis. So we have endo, body, body own, endocannabinoids. And the endocannabinoids and the um, receptors, they make our uh, endocannabinoid system. And the endocannabinoid system is an extremely important uh, part of our body. It keeps our bodies in uh, balance. It uh, provokes uh, or promotes uh, homeostasis. And it's important from the moment that we are conceived until the moment we die. It's throughout our whole mm. lives that the endocannabinoid system takes a very important role. So if you ask me, I would find it very, very interesting if doctors would learn more about the endocannabinoid system, because I think this is a very good base um, for therapy. Um, for um, any kind of therapy, um, whether it's alternative or, or uh, medicinal or uh, regular. Uh, once you get to understand the, um, uh, the complexity of the endocannabinoid system, this fine balance between um, uh, activating and deactivating, between stimulating and calming, um, I think this is very, very important for any kind of disease, uh, for any kind of person throughout the whole life. What's the most important message of my book is that we should take a different perspe perspective on cannabis um, as a whole, and more closely and more general about what the compounds in cannabis, these cannabinoids, can do for health. Um, you know, when you know that uh, ca cannabinoids from the plants, from cannabis, the phytocannabinoids, uh, have such a great effect on our endocannabinoid system, that already explains um, why uh, um, CBD and other cannabinoids work so well for so many different kind of people, for so many different kind of illnesses. And then cannabinoids in general have very interesting effects, uh, such as an anti-inflammatory effects, uh, neuroprotective effects, um, antibacterial effects. So one extract from one plant that has so many ways, one at the same time, on our bodies. So it's uh, a multi-purpose drug, if you could call it. It does not only do one thing, it does multiple things at, at the same time. So for very complex diseases, for perhaps um, ALS or other diseases, it's very, very interesting to use um, cannabinoids. I'm so happy I wrote it. It was a hell of a job. <laughs> no, it was really a hell of a job. Um, uh, I want to do things perfect and I wanted to make it available for both patients and also for, um, for, for uh, well, medical professionals. And this was very difficult because you don't want to make it too complex to read, whereas you want to make it interesting enough to read. Um, but I'm very, very happy with the result. It's a beautiful book. It's thick. It's got, I think, um, you know, whenever I gave a lecture on uh, cannabis or CBD, I got a lot of questions back. And then most of the time, especially in the beginning, I did not know the answers. So then I would say like, okay, that's a very good question. I don't know the answer but I will look it up and I will tell it and then the next time I would know about this so my presentations uh, they gain more and more information more and more content and at one point I just said well I have to release tension from my head and get this all printed and it's so nice to just have a book that you can look up stuff and think like oh what is it oh yeah yeah and then you, you have only inf mainly only information that you um, that you need um, and it's a great, great, well, tool. Um, and also funny things. Uh, I think also, uh, how to say this, um, monumentally, uh, like a time capsule. 
it's interesting to see, this is why I have these in the back side of the book, um, prints from newspapers, and of course it's all in Dutch, but there's just so much um, misunderstanding about what is cannabis, what is CBD, what is uh, industrial, recreational and um, medicinal cannabis. And the weirdest, weirdest things um, pop up in media. Everybody wants to understand. And for, I think we're slowly getting there. Now we just have to convince politicians. <laughs> so we're getting there. But like, um, it goes from uh, cows that take marijuana, to uh, a nice dinner between cannabis, to um, um, this person is uh, growing uh, fiber hemp, so the legal hemp, but is now uh, being prosecuted for uh, production of drugs. So a lot of weird stuff is going on in the society. And um, I don't know, with a book with this content and also the, the scientific evidence, I hope to have provided uh, well, good base to get some progress going. You know, I'm very hopeful um, about CBD in Holland, but it has nothing to do with the government, because I think the government is just tightening down things, making it more complex and making these strict rules. And But there's, I think, in this case I would say power to the people. There's so many people in the Netherlands that benefit from CBD. Um, I don't think there's a way back. If should CBD be banned completely, and um, well, I think there will be a, a riot. People will go to the streets and, and protest. So um, yeah, I'm I'm positive about the future. Um, but there's still a lot of things to be done. And I'm very happy to see, um, you know, small groups of people, communities uh, develop that want to focus on um, either patients and providing good information, um, you know, it, about CBD, but also, um, you know, compounds like THC. What are the differences? What are the benefits? What should you be aware of? Um, and having it, uh, um, well, more commonly used. There's one thing I'm not that positive about and in the Netherlands we have like a board, like a medical doctors association, if you can call it like this, and they provide the, uh, information to doctors and they say like, well we advise you to say this to your patient or we advise you to do that. And they actually give a negative advice on uh, medicinal cannabis as a whole and um, more specific about CBD as a food supplement, so they abstain from it. And I don't think this is a good uh, progress. Um, on the other hand, the people that I speak when giving lectures um, or, or presentations, um, more and more are having a very good conversation with their doctors. And more and more doctors seem to be more open, regardless of what the association is telling. Um, well, doctors are starting to realize, okay, so we have this endocannabinoid system. And cannabis is not only bad, it's not only maybe sometimes provoking addiction, uh, maybe we should take a different perspective and then see what's possible. As of late, I've found myself a new hobby. Apartment gardening, I like to call it. Growing flora and containers. There's just something so relaxing and mentally healing about cultivation and being around such a simple form of life. I have a large variety of fruits, herbs, and vegetables currently growing. Every day, I'm saying the only thing I'm missing is my little marijuana plant. Whether growing plants with less than 0.3% THC for therapeutic purposes, or plants with over 0.3% THC for getting high, this little plant serves as the only home in my garden. The reason being, apartment gardening comes with apartment rules. Despite cannabis being legal in Colorado, it is still prohibited by the apartment complex. Strange to think that I can grow all the fruits, herbs, and vegetables that my heart desires, but this one little plant with its mental healing abilities, and essential during these trying times, is prohibited. With all the talk about growing sustainably and responsibly sourced cannabis, growing it ourselves would ensure these best practices are upheld. 
Cannabis that grow would be free from pesticides, other toxic chemicals, and labor injustices, just like my fruits, herbs, and vegetables. This one little missing marijuana plant that is perhaps a way of easing anxiety and post-traumatic stress disorders, as well as relieving the imbalance of our endocannabinoid system as a means of curbing depression, capable of mental healing abilities. This one little missing marijuana plant that is perhaps a way of easing cancer symptoms, nausea, even seizures in the cases of Charlotte Figge, who is diagnosed with Dravet syndrome, and Chaz Moore, who is diagnosed with myoclonus diaphragmatic flutter, capable of physical healing abilities. This one little missing marijuana plant that is perhaps a way of extracting plutonium from the contaminated soils at what is now known as Rocky Flats National Wildlife Refuge, just 16 miles away from Denver. A new purpose that hemp may serve as a way to mitigate radiation, capable of environmental healing abilities. As a geography and environmental science major, I've studied the catastrophe that was the Rocky Flats nuclear power plant to some extent. To think that cannabis would even potentially have such environmental healing abilities to reduce radiation exposure from dirt contaminated by plutonium is so amazing to me. My little garden taught me a lot more about growth than I thought it would. It taught me that heaps of satisfaction can come from growth, that growth is necessary for progress to happen, that simply growing a garden leads to mental healing, that growth in the medical marijuana sector leads to physical healing, that growing hemp in contaminated soils may lead to environmental healing. Cannabis conversations must be allowed to bathe in the sun in order for growth to happen, just like with all the fruits, herbs, and vegetables in my little apartment garden. Evidence-based education and discussion must be cultivated to foster growth. Keeping cannabis in the dark will never lead to this growth, just a whole lot of growing pains.